Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to make this video today to show you how to not just get your engine to top dead center, but also be able to install the timing chain, timing chain guides, and the upgraded timing chain tensioner that I'm gonna be running on this JDM K24A. So we'll go through this uh, step by step and we'll get this final product and I'm gonna show you how to do it so that it's absolutely perfect, just like the way we got it right now. So as you can see with this one, I have everything already set to top dead center and the way that I did that is by the orientation of the cam gears up top. Yes, I did replace these uh, with the drop-in cams, but you'll see that they are perfectly aligned side to side right now and I have them locked in place by using the cam lock tool here in the back. You'll use a 24 millimeter wrench open-ended to hold this steady so that you can get these to align in the rear and then the trick really is trying to get the crank down here to be aligned. So you're gonna see these two marks right here. You see this arrow right here. You want to make sure that this is at right at 12 o'clock and uh, that one way that you can do this, uh, that I noticed when I was doing it at least, is that it was like a degree or two off. Uh, granted, this is not gonna immediately cause any concern, but it was just slightly off and I wanted to get it super duper perfect. So what I actually did is I used the crank pulley itself. And what I did is I put this on and I used the, what they call the Woodruff key. So you see how there's like that notch in there? Oh, where you can put the Woodruff key in there. And um, my friend Josh and I, we sat here and we just got it perfectly aligned. And another way that you can also indicate this too is with the timing cover itself. So if I take the timing cover and I were to mock it up, just like it would be for this engine, you could look at the arrow that's right here. And when you have the uh, crank pulley on, it should point down directly at top dead center as well. So that's a really easy way to check that everything is in order. Now going over to replacing things, here's what I currently have for this build. So what I'm actually going to be doing is I'm going to be running a OEM timing chain. Uh, so this is one that I got from Honda. I will say that this is the original timing chain and when looking at it, I would assume that there's actually nothing wrong with this, but it's just one of those things since you have the engine out on a stand, it's probably worth doing it. So I decided I'm going to replace this and I didn't want to go the full, you know, nine yards, get the over aggressive drag cartel stuff. Like, yes, that stuff is nice, but I do think in this instance, this stuff is going to work just fine for a NA build. And really the, the Honda quality, uh, trust me, there's something just so satisfying about a, uh, using a Honda original part that just gets me every time. So these are actually the original uh, timing chain guides that were on here. If you want, you could replace these. These guides are made out of plastic and I did put them through the, the parts cleaner and they cleaned up really nice. And one way to tell is if they are really scored, uh, it probably would be a good time to replace these. But as you can see with this one, uh, these plastic guides actually look really good. And just from the way that they're designed, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure you could rebuild these just by replacing the plastic portion. And you can also look too at the place where it actually comes in contact with the chain tensioner. And you can see that there's a little bit of a groove there. I mean, that's gonna be natural because there's a, a load being put on this constantly. But I think for what it is and what the goals are with this build, I don't want to just like keep throwing money at it. That's completely unnecessary. If you're going to be doing a thousand horsepower build in the K series, then yes, you know, go the, the drag cartel route. You can get the heavy duty camp or a heavy duty chain, heavy duty guides, all that fun stuff. But really OEM is, is going to be just as adequate. We can see the other chain guide here looks very good as well. And then the, the biggest thing really honestly is going to be the timing chain tensioner. And this is really good to be up to you. But in this case, uh, here we have the Honda OEM timing chain tensioner. Doesn't look terrible, but anytime that you're gonna be doing a service like this, again, it's just one of those things it's worth replacing. Cause I think it's like 60 to 80 bucks if you wanna get the OEM stuff. But I decided to go for the hybrid racing one because with this motor, we're running the Type S oil pump and the drop-in cams. So I wanna be able to complement everything and make sure that it goes all smoothly. 
And uh, this is all the stuff I got from Hybrid Racing, including the chain and all the stuff that I need for this build. And if you guys are looking for anything K-Swap related, you can join my uh, team page for free and get a discount on K-Swap everything or anything Honda related from Hybrid Racing. So I'll make sure to leave that link down below. But anyways, going back to over here, I've just been spending some time cleaning up the surface uh, using a scraper very carefully, a little bit of brake cleaner just to clean off all of these surfaces. Uh, it's not super duper perfect, but we're gonna be laying down uh, some Honda Bond once I get the timing cover on here. So uh, it should go pretty smoothly. So uh, this whole process here is gonna go pretty quickly. I think that one thing I also did wanna point out, and I wish I opened the, the bag for this, and maybe I'll do that here in a second. But if, if you can see through the bag, you can see like these golden uh, chain spots right here. And I think these are actually supposed to be aligned so that when you lay this on, and I might even have to take off this timing chain guide, is you want these to align with the two dots right here. I'm very excited for this, but I also uh, want to take my time and do this right so that we don't have to do this all over again. And uh, you could just tell from the quality of this part. It's a very small piece to the puzzle, and I feel like a lot of people overlook this, but the last thing you want is to skip a tooth on the timing chain because your engine's gonna run horribly. And uh, I believe these engines are interference, so if you run into that situation, uh, valves would be shaking hands with the pistons, and you definitely do not want to have that happen. So that's why it's very important to always check your work, make sure you did everything right, and that's why I really took my time and due diligence with making sure that everything was perfect for this because I really don't want to have to tear this down all over again. And when you lay these out, you want the two links that are gold to line up with the two dots. It almost makes it pretty much idiot proof, which is kind of nice. And then you can see it on this side too. Um, and then you're gonna have this one that's way down at the bottom over here that also has the one golden link. But really, I think you just want to focus on the top ones so that you know that you're officially aligned and then you should be good to go but first we need to put on the guides. There is something so soothing about working on this engine in a weird way. Uh, the torque specs for these are very low, 8.7 foot-pounds, I believe. So I would just say go to nine, and you should be good. Even if you ugga dugga it, I don't think it's gonna be the end of the world, but you didn't hear it from me. Now I just have to remember how these all go. Is it like this? No, there's no way. How about that? Perfect. So. Now we just need to worry about the tensioner itself and then how we're going to install that. But everything else seems to be going pretty smooth. Did want to make sure that this lines up correctly at the bottom, but I think it will. I had to make some little minor adjustments down here at the bottom using the crank pulley and the Woodruff key connected so that I can get this to line up perfectly uh, just so the teeth would bite on the timing chain itself. But it's going to go like this, and uh, what you can do now is you can adjust the guide so that it kind of gives you a better idea of what it's all going to look like. Now, one thing that you really want to do is you want to make sure that you don't pull this out before putting in these bolts, uh, because this is going to be under load. And as you can see right now, this is in the perfect position for me to put in the final bolt. What I found to be a lot easier is if I keep this loose so that this kind of dangles like this so that when you put it in, you're not gonna hurt anything that's detrimental to the, the timing chain itself. Now I can go in here very easily and just put the bolt in, screw it in, and we're pretty much in business. So now we, this is what it's gonna look like right at the end. You can make sure that everything is nice and tight, that you are top dead center, and yeah, man, it looks really good. And we all did this by ourselves, man. I think that's the coolest part. Like, th there's no crazy uh, handouts or anything like that. I'm not taking it to a shop. It's all just us doing it. Just some dude on the internet. So I want you guys to know that you can do this yourself as well. All right, here's the final stretch. I still haven't unloaded the tension on the tensioner, but I think I'm in a place where to do so. As you can see, everything's lined up at the bottom here. Everything's lined up up top. I have the guides in. So we're pretty much set here. So I'm, I'm ready to let this go. And then this will pretty much just add a little extra load right here onto the side of the chain. But I think we're, we're all good to go. So I'm gonna do it. I'm just a little nervous. I don't know why. I think we're all good. Let's see here. Yeah, and there it goes. We just, we just lift it off. There it is. Boom. 
on to more K-Series stuff. Uh, stay tuned for more. Like I said, if you guys are looking for anything K-Swap related, I'll make sure to link that down in the description. You can join my team page for free and you get a discount on everything K-Swap related. So anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next one.